you know, tonight I thought uh, I thought it was an opportunity, as I shared with the team after the game, that uh, was a good, a really good teaching game for us and, and game where we can learn and, um, you know, variety of ways. I thought uh, the Lana scheme defensively uh, was to really challenge us and uh, um, almost dare us to make some perimeter shots because of the way they were defending us tonight. Um, and again, we've talked about some of the ways throughout the game and timeouts uh, in the quarters and at halftime, um, what we do to counter those, the, the type of defense that they were playing on us. And just didn't think that consistently that we executed uh, that, um, what we were trying to get accomplished against their defense. And then, you know, count, compounded was a, a really tough shooting night from the arc. Uh, we shot nearly 50% on non-three shots tonight. Um, a lot of nights, you know, when you supplement that with some of your three-point shooting, you know, those nights you probably feel pretty good that you've shot uh, 50% on, on non-threes. But And we've been shot over 50% a couple games in a row. So, um, you know, it, just disappointing the way we shot it because I felt like they were almost daring us at times. Defensively got off to a tough start, took that um, haymaker early. They really established Ryan and Tina early. We tried to make adjustments um, and, and tried to find um, uh, a rhythm. And again, just wasn't happy with our offensive, our defensive rebounding to be able to uh, complete plays. Their offensive rebounding percentage for us tonight is just unacceptable. And we gave up 17 second chance points, but it's more the offensive rebounding percentage that they had tonight on their misses. We got 38 misses. Um, you know, they were trending towards a night where they were going to miss 40 plus shots, but we couldn't get out in transition because we couldn't defensive rebound consistently enough and those offensive 17 points off offensive rebounds really it is deflating uh, when you get a, a first shot miss and you can't finish the play. So um, I just, I think, again, I know that's a long opening statement, um, but I really think there was a lot of good teaching points tonight for our young team. And it's tough to lose at home. It's tough to lose in that fashion to learn things. But if we do, if we walk out of here tonight, and learn from it, um, you know, then I think we'll be better in the long run. Um, shout out to these two. Um, you know, I, I extended Rakia, didn't take her out for the first 30 minutes. Um, and she didn't complain. She didn't grab her shirt. She just kept playing through it and played her in multiple different actions and different positions, asked her to guard different people. I'm just really proud of Rakia that way. Uh, she went over 400 career points um, as a rookie. She joins uh, an exclusive list of Sparks, of Candace Parker, Neko Gumake, and Lisa Leslie as the only rookies that have done that. So I just want to continue to shout out Rakia Jackson is very special and has a bright, bright future. And then Lee, um, a night where uh, Azrae was under the weather um, and not feeling well and uh, while she'll never use as an excuse, and I certainly probably, she probably could have gutted through uh, longer. I liked what Lee was doing and her physicality was a different look on Tina, was a different look for us to have a presence inside. And Lee stepped up to it when, you know, we just, we were three for 12 from our starting post. I appreciated that Lee was ready when our number was called and, and, uh, and again, had a good night for us. Hey, Jackie, with Jackie Ray TV. Lee, this question is for you. Um, we talked before and you said one of the things you really wanted to do more of was finish your shots when your teammates really got you involved in the game. How do you feel like you've evolved thus far, this win, this loss regardless? How do you feel like you've evolved this season? You know, I still try to learn it more. Every game I have, a, you know, I meet every, a lot of problem for every game and I learn for every game, try to figure out it and the next game I, it's another problem as I still learning. Um, for today, um, I feel uh, I try to um, be stronger with uh, Tina together play because she's a you know super superstar. I try to learning her and uh, I try to um, show me for her and uh, I try to um, play stronger. Um, 
I, you know, I'm learning lots in practice, in coach, and uh, learning a lot from another team. So uh, I try to be more better to help our team and uh, um, try to be better myself. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Rikia, um, you're known for getting your team off to a strong start. Today you had a little bit more of a slower start. How did you work through that mentally and just by your, with your game? Um, I feel like just focusing on all my defense, um, trying to get my teammates involved, um, staying aggressive. My shot's not going to fall every night like I would want them to, but we got to continue to play. Um, I feel like my defense has, has come a long ways. Um, still got some things to work out, but um, I feel like I just – focused on the defensive end more. Great. Hi, Alita, this question's for you. Uh, how was it going against Tina Charles, one of the all-time greats? Uh, I, I met her in China before, so we know each other. Uh, she's a really good player. I know I know her, and uh, but today she still uh, gets a lot, you know, uh, she showed her, and uh, I try to learn more how to defend her and uh, how to let her don't get rebound. <laughs> she gets a lot of rebound and uh, some um, uh, good offense. So uh, I still need to give, uh, learn to how to defend her and uh, try to um, have a more offense, different shots to uh, play with her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, DJ from Infinity TV. Rakia, um, there was a lot of different things happening in the paint, but a new move that we've been seeing from you a lot is that like pivot, step back, jumper. Can you talk about like how you work with the coaching staff to de develop new ways to get you space to score? Uh, yeah, I feel like that's just something that I've kind of always did, especially like if I can't get to the rim all the way, um, have a counter. But, you know, Nola and I work, with, work on that move literally every single day before the game. Um, you know, them staying confident, telling me, you know, I can score against anybody. So um, them instilling that just, you know, makes me want to go at people more and continue to do that. Um, I feel like it just helps me get my shot off because, you know, people think I'm about to do a layup and then I just fade away. So, yeah. Last question on that. Uh, Rikia, Coach Miller said pregame that you're becoming a, a superstar player, a future star player. Do you think you're a star player already? Um, and how do you think your game has improved? And also, Coach, um, you know, these are only two players in double figures tonight. How do you get more offense? Um, I feel like if Coach Kurt says that, then that means I am because he doesn't say that about anybody. So, um, But I do feel like I'm a star. I feel like I'm a growing star. Um, I feel like I'm never content, and I feel like that's what makes me um, a star. I feel like I want to continue to get better. Um, you know, when they tell me, you know, I need you to be better at this, I literally try to fix it in the next game. Um, and I feel like just being a sponge and wanting to get better each and every game, each and every practice, I feel like that is what is going to take me over top. Um, I'm not 100% where I want to be, um, but I feel like I'm a growing star. I don't feel like I'm 100% there yet, but um, just continuing to stay within it, listen to my coaches and my teammates, I feel like. One day I am going to get there, and I feel like I improved most, again, on my defense, just having a defensive-minded mentality, um, especially with the guards in this league. Like, I'm, you know, I don't I don't like when they score on me. It, it honestly bothers me. Um, and I feel like I've just been more intensive, just, you know, guarding them, trying to chase them off screens more, not dying off screens and things like that. So um, I feel like that's what I got Thank the best job. All right, questions for Kurt. Do you want me to answer that one? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, offensively, it was a tough night for us. And again, um, you know, inside the arc, I didn't think we shot it too badly. I thought we tried to establish. I thought at times we were getting pieces of the paint and spraying the ball around and we actually uh, were executing from our penetration to open threes. You know, and, and again, it's a make or miss league. We've got to step up and make some threes. Uh, I thought we had a lot of, of our 21 attempts. I thought we had a lot of open threes. So, and, and we're capable of making those. So, you know, that, that was the difficult part. Um, obviously their scheme was to dare us into it and force us to see if we would take some of those with the way they were playing the ball screens. And, and um, again, it was just one of those nights shooting 
but again, the other way was we couldn't get enough stops to get out and transition. Mm -hmm. A big goal for us was uh, to be in double figure fast break points tonight was uh, to really play early and get them cross matched with our commitment to run. And it was just really difficult to run against them tonight. They missed 38 shots, but it was difficult to get to run tonight against Atlanta because we just couldn't secure enough defensive rebounds consistently throughout the night. Hey, Coach, when you all talk about uh, Lee tonight, uh, I saw a lot of players uh, feeding her inside tonight. Was that, was that part of the game plan for her to you know, be a force inside? Yeah, you know, certainly when she's on the floor, she cars out space and can demand the ball. And so um, at times um, that, you know, when we were starting to struggle at the arc, there was a commitment to get her touches. And she's good at, at drawing fouls and so accumulating fouls. So maybe it's not always her, but maybe the foul count goes up earlier in quarters and we can get ourselves to the foul line. But uh um, you know, I, I appreciated the, the willingness for our guards to share it with her that way. Um, again, you know, she just, she's 25. She's only her second year uh, in the league. Uh, not, you know, just a little over, you know, three quarters of the way into her second year. So she's just going to get better and better. She is really humble. Uh, she's a really hard worker. She's really open-minded. She thinks that, you know, there's so much growth all the time. And I just, you know, appreciate our, our players love her. Um, our coaching staffs love her. She's just a blessing to have here. And uh, I look forward to her growth. My name is Sherlock Kelly Kuzma. Um, I didn't notice in the fourth quarter you guys outscored the Atlanta Dream. I mean, that was also an attribute you had in your win against the New York Liberty. If you could just talk to me about the energy that the Sparks gave the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, I thought... I, I never doubted, I wanted a toughness, I wanted a compete level. I think we could have competed higher. But as I shared with them, I, I, didn't, I didn't think we were lazy. I didn't think that we weren't trying. Um, you know, we talked about before the game that uh, there, there's a lot out there saying that this was a must win for Atlanta. You know, there's, you know, there is a dogfight for the eighth and final spot uh, on, on, this, you know, on this playoff picture and situation. And you knew how hard they were going to play. So, you know, I appreciated that it wasn't one of those nights, you know, it wasn't one of those nights and uh, that we kept fighting. And some players, um, Isaiah Cook, that hasn't always gotten consistent minutes here, got an opportunity and she played hard. And so, you know, I, I appreciate that's the culture we're trying to create. doesn't matter what the score is on the scoreboard, um, that we're going to play hard. Now, I will tell you, to not have one quarter – of 20 or more points tonight is disappointing, you know, disappointing at this level, especially with what we've done lately, scoring the basketball, to not have one quarter and 20 or more, disappointing. But um, again, you know, uh, was much better defensively in the second half, but still couldn't get our offense going to make them really feel us, right? We got it down to teams. I don't think we broke it back into single digits, but, um, you know, just they never, I wanted them to really feel us at some point in the pressure when you have a big lead. Coach, you know, you've talked a lot this year about how this is a build, you know, and how the process and, and how you get there, you know, is what's, what's is something that's really important. You know, you have two players up here with you that have made tremendous strides from, from the beginning of the year to now. Um, regardless of how the rest of this season turns out, um, what what would you need to see from from some of these young players in order to to kind of consider it you know a success? Yeah, and you know again, I, I just I want an attitude, a culture um, of growth. I want a culture that um, doesn't separate when it gets tough. Um, a resilient team that uh, can take a, a poor stretch or a run and respond to it. Um, you know, I I don't like these nine o ten o starts against us but you know what what's really important to me is how we're responding to runs in the game um and do we step back up um it just wasn't a good enough first quarter on both sides of the ball uh but we had trouble stopping runs tonight because we couldn't score consistently but um you know again it's just a mindset to come to work um you know you always fight yourself as a coach do you, you know should we have given them two days off after New York, but we know we're on the road for 
these next two games and, and then the cadence really um, picks up with our games. And so, you know, um, I don't know if, if that extra day off contributed to being a little sluggish. I don't, you know, like that's where you start to second guess yourself as a coach. But I, I want a work, a professionalism about this group down the stretch, regardless of how many wins we end up with. Um, you know, I just want to compete level that's that's higher. You know, I ask Derek and Azare to really lead us. Um, you know, they're two champions, they're two WNBA champions in our locker room. And uh, it's really important that they continue to keep leading what the passion, energy, compete level has to be like to be forming a championship team in the long run. Hey, Coach DJ from Infinity TV. Um, this is your first time going up against Tanisha Wright after you guys spent so much time together with that gold medal team. What was it like tonight coaching against one of your colleagues? Yeah, we become, we become, you know, she's my sister from another mother. You know? <laughs> um, we become incredibly close and, um, you know, just really respect uh, when you spend that much time. It's like summer camp, right? You, know, you just spend so much time together and you're pulling for the same thing and you're trying to support Cheryl, which, you know, like we, you could keep me here for days to talk about the pressure that the U.S. Olympic coach feels. So we're going to be bonded for life. That staff will be bonded for life. Um, it's been a pleasure to get to know her. Uh, she's really, really close with Karen Bryant, who hired me here to the Sparks. And so I, you know, always heard about Tanisha Wright. I was brought into the league by Brian Agler, who isn't afraid or shy to say that Tanisha Wright was the favorite player he ever coached. And he's coached a million great ones. And so I like, you know, like, what, what's so special? Everyone talks about how special Tanisha Wright is, but I got to see it. Um, so she's she's my sister from another mother. We're, we're bonded for life. And, and I, you know, I, I'm a rooter for her. Um, I didn't want to root for her tonight, but, I, you know, I, I, you know, when I'm not, you know, now I, I, I root for her. Uh, she was a special player um, in this league that played with passion and, and was a really, really good defender and carved out a niche for herself for a long time and hung around a long time. So uh, I think she's doing great things there. Um, you know, I wish them well in, in their compete for the last playoff spot. And uh, again, you know, she's a special one. Hey coach, uh, we talked about Rakea playing the first 30 minutes. Um, was it a matter of getting her going after a slow start offensively or just more like experience? Yeah, again, um, I just I have so much confidence in her that um, she's going to find stretches in a game where um, she's going to bring good things at both sides of the ball. I, I love her growth defensively. She's still got a ways to go um, and schemes to learn and, and how people try to attack her. But the compete level has from May to now, you just have to pop in a film. It's crazy. Um, you know, she, she knows now the new thing I'm on is, you know, her rebounding numbers go up. But, um, you know, again, we ran a bunch of things out of timeouts for her. We ran some things to start the game for her. The ball just didn't go in. Uh, but, you know, like she still, you know, scored 13 points. Um, and, and I, you know, and, and that's an off night. And that's what I think you're going to see Rakia moving forward is Rakia is going to be a team scorer even on off nights. And you're going to see her in the 20s consistently, um, you know, as we go up. But, the one thing she's earned is more attention and she got more attention tonight in some of the actions that we've been using. She got more attention from Alana. That's a credit to her that there there's now scatter report attention to her. Um, and that's then now her next step is she's, you know, an asterisk and a, and a, a, a you know, one a um, on talking about opponent scouting and what they want to do. And, and players that have earned that right then learn from that. And so, you know, this is a great opportunity. She had she had more attention to her tonight. And how can you still be successful even when, you know, those scatter reports and attention from opponents are on you? And I think she's going to handle it with um, incredible grace. And, and I think she's just going to thrive through it. And I look forward to these last eight games with her getting that type of attention because that will only help her going into year two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.